clearly early on, we didn't know if Tua was going to make it in the NFL talent-wise. Now, we know the talent is there. The talent around him is there. The head coaching is there. It just comes down to, can Tua stay healthy? I think that is the big question, but let's rewind on the season last year for just a quick second because you look at these games where they didn't even have a good quarterback. They still were very much in contention in some of these games. Remember, they lost in the wild card to the Buffalo Bills by a mere three points. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember who was playing the quarterback there. Uh, So I think this is a team that can get by with good defense and good special teams and a very smart head coach in Mike McDaniel, that sometimes they're a little better than people expect. Now, obviously, you need a good quarterback if you want to contend for anything. I'm just saying against the spread, this was actually the best team in the AFC East. Was it a great clip, ATS? Not that great. But still, the only winning against the spread record in the AFC East last year, 10 and 8, and even better as an underdog, 5 and 3 against the number. So what do you make of that? These teams that kind of perform uh, above expectations, even when their quarterbacks are hurt. Like it almost reminds me of my Titans, how I think it reflects on the head coach and how he gets them ready to play each and every week. Uh, but what do you think that says for the Dolphins and the fact that maybe the market is too low on them? Well, I, I think two things. Number one is Tua is absolutely a difference maker. They finished 9-8, and eight, correct? But they were 8-3 and three in games that Tua played. So there's clearly a difference that he makes at the quarterback position. But to your point, there is a lot to like about the Dolphins. Seriously, mm-hmm. if it, if you look at the talent that they have, the the, the defensive player, they traded for Jalen Ramsey. Let's not forget that. They brought in Vic Fangio to run that defense. We can talk about that as well. If you go under the hood, so to speak, and you look at the talent that the Dolphins have and their schedule and their potential, I mean, it's hard not to say, I want to take a real shot on the Dolphins at plus 275 to win the division or to make the playoffs at minus 105. Whatever it is, I, the more research I did about the Dolphins, the more I thought, man, this is a team that could absolutely, I don't want to say blow the doors off because that division is so competitive. And I, mm-hmm. I just come, I, I, I hate sounding like a broken record. It really does depend on Tua because if he's healthy, I mean, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, those receivers are unbelievable. Tyreek Hill's already talked about it. He wants to go for more than 2,000 yards last year. He didn't know the playbook last year. This cat came in and admitted, eh, just kind of running around, and I told Tua to throw it to me. And he had more than 1,700 yards. Jalen Waddle had more than 1,300 yards. He averaged 18.9 yards per catch. That led the National Football League. So when you think about that talent and that that defense, which I believe is going to improve, You can make a real strong case for the Dolphins. It just keeps coming back to that same old quarterback question. Right, but what my point is, is that this team was still a solid team even when they didn't have a good starting quarterback, even when it was Skylar Thompson, even when it was Teddy Bridgewater who would come in and get another concussion for the team that I feel like led the league in concussion. So you're right. If Tua can stay healthy, I think the ceiling for this team is really high. But you really can't address this team. It's sort of the elephant in the room. All of the talent is there. Tua has the talent. He showed it last season. Can he stay healthy and upright this year? Yeah, I'll tell you, the Dolphins, and I'll get to Tua in a second, the Dolphins are mm-hmm. a weird kind of a unicorn, guys, in that they could mm-hmm. either play in the AFC. You, you could convince me that they, that they will be playing in the AFC championship game, and you could equally convince me that they won't make the playoffs. That's, that's, that's how, you know, the dichotomy that's going on with the Dolphins. They could go either way. Tua, you know, it is. In, in 15 games last year, he threw for 3,500 yards, 26 touchdowns. If he's healthy, the Dolphins will rampage all over the division and the AFC. Uh, I think he will do great for the judo business. Remember, he's taking judo uh, to make sure he knows how to fall so he won't have head injuries. Are you telling me oh no head injuries if you take judo? So the whole judo in, you know, industry will blow up. Listen, they have, they have amassed a tremendous team on both sides of the ball. Uh, nine and a half is the win total at BetMGM. But at the same time, they're minus 105 to make the playoffs, and they're minus 115 to not make the playoffs. Mm. That's crazy with the third best odds in their own division behind Buffalo and the Jets. Guys, it's, it's, it's a gauntlet. They have the second toughest schedule in the NFL, 
And the first four games, three road games, they open up at the Chargers, Sunday night at New England, and then week four at Buffalo. That's tough. You blink wrong, and it, they're one and three. They could be 0 and four. So it's going to be an interesting uh, – they're going to be a great story to follow, just with Mike McDaniel and the defense and Vic Fangio and can two us to healthy. It's going to be a wild ride in Miami. Yeah, so the discussion for us is do you take a look at their win total – or take the long odds on them to win the AFC East because the win total is tough because, like you said, the schedule is so daunting. But when you have a division like the AFC East where I feel like there are three teams that could definitely win this division and you have the Dolphins as, you know, the team that has the longer odds of those teams, I'm not throwing the Patriots in there because, number one, the Dolphins seem to own the Patriots and also I think they're a step behind those three teams. But do you think it's, ta- it's worth taking a swing on the Dolphins to win the AFC East? Or are you going to take the win total here at nine and a half? To to me, I think they're a nine-win team. So I I would almost – the under seems to be the play. The the problem with Miami is is for them this year anyway, they go to Buffalo and they go to New England early in the year. So there isn't those snow games at the end of the year. Uh, They end the Mm. season at home with Buffalo. But, man, they've got the Cowboys. They've got the Eagles. They got the Chiefs. They got the Chargers. They ha- they've got to go to Baltimore. It's a tough schedule. I think it, 10 wins would be extraordinary for this team. And, and that whole division, because wherever the Dolphins play, the Bills and Jets have to play as well. I think they're about nine wins. I think it'll be good enough to get into the wild card game. I would go with the under, barely. 11-1 uh, to 1 to win the AFC. That seems more. That seems kind of interesting to me because if they if they get on a hot streak, if they get on a, if, if they get some steam behind them, I'd love eleven to one to, to to actually get to the Super Bowl. I'll ask you first, Jenks. Fact or fiction? Mm-hmm. They need to be honest with themselves. They need to go ahead and get the best deal they can and trade Otani away. Fact or fiction? This is a fact. They have to do it. I understand that you never want to be the team to trade away the greatest player that we've ever seen or are certainly one of them. There's no question about that. However, at the end of this season, they could lose him and get nothing. You cannot risk worrying about your reputation because you got rid of Shohei when he could leave anyway. You will not have more of an asset than you have at this very moment. And let's be honest, the one frustrating thing, Chelsea, you were just talking about it. Shohei goes off. Mike Trout goes off. I know he's injured right now. And what happens? The Angels lose. They don't make the postseason. So at the end of the day, as much as it may pain you to say, we got to get rid of this guy, you want to win games. You want to make the postseason. You want to win a World Series. The worst thing that could happen is for them to hang on to Shohei, hope that maybe he re-signs or something, and then all of a sudden they're left with this massive hole this vast black hole nothing for Shohei they've got to do something fact yeah absolutely they gotta stop living in the middle in no man's land where they're a decent team but they're not making the postseason isn't this the biggest complaint of fans of like NFL teams that always finish like you know eight and eight nine and eight it's that yeah, it's a great season, but like you're never going to be contending for a Super Bowl and you're not bad enough to get those top end picks. So we see this in baseball quite frequently where these teams for years are building prospects, are building their farm system to where eventually they go from the worst team in baseball to one of the better ones. Like not too long ago, the Braves were one of those teams. They had some really bad seasons in there. Look at the Houston Astros and look at the prospects that they brought up uh, when they were losing 100 games. They had Carlos Correa in the minors. They had George Springer in the minors that they were waiting to bring up. So this is how a winning recipe is born in baseball. You have to have the prospects. So if you can get you know, three or four top 100 prospects out of this, I think you absolutely do it. You've had Otani. You haven't made the playoffs. You can't even be in contention for the AOS. So you got to give him up.